Hi, the math informant here. We're trying to work this problem with a Norman window, writing the area as a function of only its width x. Here's how it goes. This problem took a little bit of effort to get through, but let's work through the parts that got us here. First of all, we have no idea what the height of this Norman window is. So we've got to just assume that the height is some arbitrary height h. The tools that we'll need in order to do this are twofold. They gave us information about the perimeter. So we're going to need something to work with with perimeter. And we also need a tool for the area. So looking at a Norman window, you've got a rectangle and you've got a semicircle or half circle. If you look at our tools here for a circle, the area is pi r squared and its perimeter or circumference all the way around is two pi r. And for the rectangle, area is width times the height and the perimeter would be two widths plus two heights because you've got two widths bottom and top and you've got two heights, one on each side and you add all of those together. In this problem, we've got kind of a quirky issue. We don't know what the radius is directly. Well, the radius of our circle up here is really from the center point to just one of the sides. So if you look here, the radius would actually just go from right here, this little dot over to the end. And that means that the radius is half the length of X. So for the rest of the problem, we need to assume that little r is equal to X over two half of the x value. And that'll be enough to get us where we need to be at the end. Now, this is technically a problem that requires solving a system of equations. If you look, you want to start with the perimeter. So this would be equation number one. And the perimeter, looking at the Norman window, the perimeter is going to be 1x plus 1h plus another h. So we get x plus 2 h's for the sides, but we also need to add to that the perimeter going around this top part of the circle. Well, that's half of a circle. So we'll just do half of whatever the circle is. And half a circle, looking over here at the perimeter, it's 2 pi r. So we have a half, 2 pi, and the radius, r. But we said r is x over 2. So that's why this x over 2 appears right here. Now we can start using some tools. We can combine stuff and we know that the perimeter P was given to be 20. Maybe it's inches, maybe it's feet, who knows? Meters, doesn't matter. So we'll change the perimeter and say it's gotta be equal to 20, it's fixed. And now just start combining pieces in here. So of course this two and this two will cancel, which leaves us with pi and it multiplies the X and it's over two. Now we get this nice layout and really our goal here is to just get h by itself. So what we're seeing is in effect, from this step here, we left the 2h on the right side of the equal sign and subtracted x and subtracted the pi x over 2. Then what we did is we just flipped the equality around. So we grabbed it and twisted it and rotated it. So the 2h ended up over here and everything else ended up over on the other side. They're equal, you're always allowed to flip equalities. And then to get from here, we had to divide both sides by the two. Well, if we divide the 20 by a two and the negative x by a two and the negative pi x over two by two, that'll stick a two under each one of these. So we've got an additional two right here from that division, dividing each piece by a two. And this, of course, will end up giving us a 10 minus x over 2 minus pi x over 4. This is the tool that you need in order to move back over to the area function. So the second equation is the one you're trying to end up with. Equation number two in this system is the function of area. So look at the area function closely. Area for this guy would be the area of the rectangle plus the area of our semicircle. Well, the area of the rectangle is width times height, and our width is x, height is h. x, h is our rectangle's area. Then we need to add to that the area of the semicircle, half circle, 
and the area of this is going to be a circle's area divided by two. So that'll be pi r squared, but we need to divide it by two. So we see the half out here is our division by two, and then inside we get pi r squared, but of course r we already said was x over two. So we've got the rectangle area plus the circle or half circles area in this case. And now we start boiling things down, right? Squaring means square the top and the bottom. That'll give us x squared in the top. Square the bottom, we get four. Then we can multiply the half onto this. And of course the one multiplies the top, the two will multiply the bottom. And it's at this point, here is the whole key to the problem right here. It's at this point, we want all of this to be about the x's because the area is a function of the width and the width of course is x. So that's our goal and in this we need to get rid of h. So it's this step right here. There is the key step. What we're gonna do is use this definition here for h and substitute it in. So right here we replace the h that's here with everything we know it was from the perimeter function. It's substitution in a system of equations. Be very cautious though. If you just wrote this for h and forgot your parentheses, guaranteeably you're gonna get the wrong answer because x multiplies every component that was h. So this is just a little substitution for h. We stuff it in there and now we let the x hop on to each one of the pieces. First one will give us 10x, x times this x will give us an x squared, x times this last piece will give us pi x squared in the top, and we still got the last guy hanging on at the very end. And now we're in a good enough shape or a, a nice enough place, we can start to finagle. So technically the answer is done right here. If you wanna write an answer just to appease an instructor, there's your answer, give them that. But we want a little bit more finesse. The finesse that we're looking for here is something that's kind of insightful about how the function behaves. So we do some algebra here to get to this result because this tells us something really nice. Here's the algebra. Everything here has an x squared. We need a common denominator. Eight is our guy, right? Common denominator for a two, a four, and an eight is obviously eight. So the guy with the eight stays the same. This middle term had a four. We'd multiply the four by two, but we also multiply the top thing that was there by a two. This guy needs to be eight here. He was a two, so we have to multiply the bottom by four to get there, which means we multiply the top by four as well. Then we gather these pieces together. We got a pi x squared from this guy, which is why we could say plus here. He was a plus. One pi x squared minus two of them. That leaves us with a deficit, a negative pi x squared. So these two combine to give us that negative pi x squared and the negative four hangs on the end. So we factor the x squared out of this component and we factor the x squared out of that component which means we're left with the negative pi and the negative four, the eight is in the bottom and the x squared's got yanked out to be a singular x squared here. And then we took the 10 x and threw it onto the back side. And the very last step was to take these negatives, we factored those or pulled those out and then left these as positive on the inside. And, and the reason is this, there's, there's a very simple, sincere reason to do it. This function looks like a x squared plus b x. It's a quadratic and quadratics graphically do one of two things. They smile or they frown and it's based on the a value. And if you look, our a value, the value in front of x squared is our a value. The value in front is pi plus four over eight. All these are positive, but they have a negative in front, which means this whole term is negative, which means that we know if we were gonna analyze this some more, the graph of this is going to be frowning. It opens downward. And that's good news because that means our area function grows this way, which means there's some width. We don't know what it is, but you could draw this out. You can imagine here are the X's. There's some unknown X right here that clearly corresponds to a maximum height along the 
area axis, the vertical one. So the reason we wrote it out this way was because we saw it was a quadratic. Now we know what it looks like roughly on a graph, something like this. It may not be exactly where we placed it, but we know that the area will have a max for some x value. And now we could find it if we wanted to. It will be at the vertex. So if you wanna go a little bit further or have to dive deeper, you can run and grab the vertex of that. But in general, we solved the problem and finished here. We know that the area is a function of the width defined by this quadratic parabola as graphed. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any nice, tough math questions, feel free to send them to the mathinformant at gmail.com. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.